Hello! 10th edition has fully released as of last week, and we are here to tell you how every army plays, what the playstyle of every army is, maybe for people who are newer, who want to get into the game, and who want to learn what army fits them personally, and that's what we are here for. Quentin, are yeah. you excited? I'm so excited. So one of my favorite things about Warhammer is that unlike a lot of other games, every army plays fundamentally differently. They have they play totally opposites. Um, some factions are slow, some factions are fast, some are durable, some are fragile. Um, and it's really cool to see all the variety. And so we're here to talk about what that variety is and how each faction falls amongst the others. That's right. And a lot of armies, um, some games, you know, armies are defined by rules. And this is 40k is one of them. Um, they are defined by their detachment rule, their army rule, which gives them certain ways that they play the game that other armies don't even have access to. So it's going to be very interesting going over and seeing, oh, this rule makes this army super fun for this particular play style of player. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the War Room, Quentin. Yes, the War Room. The, the War Room is our community where we put up, um, where we have all kinds of videos for all different skill levels if you want to learn the game and become your best. Uh, there is a link in the description below. It's the warroom.vhx.tv. Bit of a mouthful. I know. That's why there's a link down below. And there's a three-day free trial if you want to find out what it's all about. We have a global community in our Discord as well where people are dissecting 10th edition in detail at this moment. Crazy detail. And if you're in the Discord, you can talk to us. That's right. Yeah, We're there just, as well. You can just message us and we'll respond. Because we are just as passionate about 10th edition and 40k as you are. Mm-hmm. You know, we decided to do this for our jobs. We did. For some reason. Do you know what I did on my day off? What did you do on your day off? I played a bunch of Warhammer. God bless you, Quentin. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Quentin. Fun fact for the day. What right. is it? You've been queued up in chat. I know. The fun fact of the day is that the first World Chess Championship was held in 1886. Wow. That's a long time ago. That was a long time ago. A long time ago. I would so, I want to see it. I'll bet you by uh, 2086, it'll have the biggest World Warhammer Championship. One can hope. One can hope. All right. And we see in the chat, there are some super chats. We really appreciate you. But for the sake of flow for this video, we're going to address them all in a segment at the end. So stay tuned. We will get to your, every single super chat that we have. We're just going to do them all together at the end. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I think that uh, that's mostly mostly that. Time to get right. into it. Into it. Just uh, one thing. Mm -hmm. If you like this video, please like the video. Please hit the like button. Please uh, leave a comment about anything you disagree with us, agree with us, think we're you know think we're handsome, whatever. I love reading it. Uh, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Hit the little bell icon. It really really helps us out, and we appreciate it. All right. Well, first up would be. Uh, Space Marines. Space Marines! Yay! Woo! Space Marines! The poster boys of Warhammer, everyone's favorite faction. I feel like every 40k player has at least one Space Marine somewhere in their collection. That's so what right. do Space Marines do, Jack? You play Space Marines. I do. Space Marines are kind of the jack of all trades, which, you know, I appreciate. They are master of none, but you'll find often that uh, master of all is better than that, or whatever the, the saying actually goes. Space Marines are quite good in every single category. They have the widest army range by a significant amount, mm -hmm. which means that if you want to play a mechanized shooty or like infantry-based shooty army, you can. They have the units to support that. If you want to play a melee army that tries to rush you down, they can support that as well. If you want to try and run like a middle of the pack, you know, I have some shooting, I have some combat, I'm going to try and be good everywhere, just like a Space Marine should, can do that as well. They have some of the better shooting units in the game. Uh, Desolation Marines, uh, Hell Blasters, Gladiators, Lancers, Reapers, Valiants, all of those very, very, very good shooting units. And they have some very good combat units as well. Blade Guard veterans hit quite hard, and you can join a Judiciar to make them very annoying to charge. Mm -hmm. So they're generally good everywhere, and they are fairly elite. They don't generally have super large squads. So your hobbying time goes very far. It really does. So one way I like to think about Space Marines is if you rate all of the different like things an army can do, like speed and durability and melee damage and ranged output, Space Marines are never like top of the line in any one thing, but they're like a 7 out of 10 at everything. So whatever you want to be doing, Space Marines can do that thing. So if you want to try and be durable, you can take Terminators. If you want to be fast, you can take Outriders, Landspeeders, and Bikes. If you want to shoot, you can take Desolators and Whirlwinds. If you want to fight, you can take 
Blade Guard or Assault Terminators or whatever. You have a ton of options, and that's really what Space Marines do. Another cool thing about them is because they're all, you know, transhuman super warriors, all of their guys are pretty okay at everything. So even your basic troops are good at beating up the basic troops of other units. Yeah. Uh, finally, something that might be helpful for newer players is their models are very beginner friendly to paint uh, because they have a lot of flat surfaces, a lot of armor plating that generally tends to be one color and then you shade. But as, uh, as our friend Cass Hushadar will let you know, there is a lot of room to make some very beautiful Space Marine models. Uh, and so there's a wide range of expression in terms of uh, skill and in terms of painting skill as well. Yep. So I think it's a super cool army to have in your collection. But the, f the, the best thing about Marines, in my opinion, is the uh, chapters. Yes. If you really want to specialize in one play style, chapters have you covered because you can specialize in a variety of different ways depending on which uh, sub-faction you want to play. So you're, you are playing Marines. You get Oath of Moment, which is, or Oaths of Moment, which are the Space Marine uh, Army rule, which is you pick a target and it has a very bad day because your reroll hits and wounds against it with your entire army. Um, but then you get an alternate detachment rule, say if you want to run Black Templars, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, Death Watch, Space Wolves, etc. And then you can specialize your army in a, uh, in a different direction. So the first up would be Black Templars. Yes. So One of your favorites. Yep. Absolutely love Black Templars. So the thing about Black Templars is that they tend to, they, they have more, more, uh, Marines in their chapter mm -hmm. than most other chapters. Yes. They don't really follow the Codex Astartes. It's more of a set of guidelines than anything else. So they have more than the mandated, what? Thousand, 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 Marines, thousand yeah. dudes. They, they've got a lot more than that. And they go crusading and boy will they let you know. They mm -hmm. love large squads. They love rocking across the board with a tide of dudes just running at you and they're too... Uh, fervent to die yes but boy will they return not return the favor you will die when you get in close with them black templars like to smack people around so the black templars are a kind of horde marine army that really focuses on melee and they really don't like psychers no. so not only can you not run any librarians in your army you get bonuses sometimes if you fight psychers that's right uh so their particular thing is they swear an oath at the start of the game mm -hmm. And you get a set of bonuses based off of which oath you have sworn. So if you see your foe and you're like, I will uphold the honor of the emperor today, you get a different bonus. You are a little harder to kill. So Black Templars are great for seeing your opponent, swearing a particular vow and getting a buff against them that matters. Um, they're also very good at just being generically really annoying to kill as they trudge across the battlefield, taking objectives and killing you. Yep. Well, most things, Black Templars make excellent use of chaplains better than almost any other chapter. That's right. That's right. So, Black Templars, very uh, very fun if you like to take a lot more models, be durable, and and punch. Mm -hmm. One last thing, if you're a newer player, um, all of these chapters have a specific scheme attached, but if you paint your Marines kind of however, typically you can run them at whatever chapter you want. So, say you paint your Marines blue and white, and you decide you want to run them as Blood Angels, most players won't really fault you for that. That's right. That's right. And I think that's awesome, especially if you want to make your own custom chapter, yep. which is something that you can absolutely do with Marines. There's, uh, there is a well of lore the size of, you know, Several, very big. There's, there's a publishing company devoted to Marine lore. That's right. Yeah. So you can find, you know, some chapter that whose fluff really suits you. Mm -hmm. And you can read a book about them and you can get involved. You can have your different characters be... You know, you can you can have models of your different characters, and then you can kind of play them as whatever chapter you yep. want. Absolutely. All right, next up is one near and dear to my heart. I, uh, I joined this chapter a bit back. Let me see. There we go. I, uh, I got myself a Blood Angels tattoo because I'm a Blood Angel now. You're a Blood Angel now. That's right. I am, uh, I am Codex compliant. I have it on the correct shoulder. <laughs> so Blood Angels are probably my, my favorite army of the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, they are are a bit more jack of all tradesy than Black Templars, but they do love mixing it up in hand to hand. Yes. So Blood Angels are really are a, a jump pack focused um, army. 
And they have two really awesome special units, the Sanguinary Guard and the Death Company, your favorite units in the game. That's right. That's right. I played them to LVO last year. I played, you know, 21 Sang Guard and 15 Death Company. And that list was a blast to play. It was so much fun. And that sort of play style is still what the army uh, rewards. Death Company are hit insanely hard. I still love, I love Death Company so much. Same with Sanguinary Guard. They're really annoying to shift. And you just hit really, really hard. Your uh, detachment rule, instead of being Black Templars where you get like a little buff or you get a little durability or whatnot, uh, they just hit really hard, especially when they charge you. Don't get charged by Blood Angels. They're, they might be the hardest uh, hitting melee Marines. Probably are. Probably yeah. are. They, uh, they don't take prisoners, that is for sure. Um, but they still have some units to shoot, and they're still decent at shooting. And you can kind of jack of all trades it. But they really love to mix it up close and personal. So things like Assault Marines, uh, Vanguard Veterans, Sanguinary Guard, Death Company, all of them will remove you from existence if you get charged by them. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, they are still Marines. And that's the cool thing about the chapters is you have access to all the basic things. Say you want to run your Sanguinary Guard, but you can still back them up with your Desolators or Gladiator Lancers or whatever shooting options you'd like. Absolutely. I've put them on the table a few times in this edition, and they still fit that mold. Uh, they're, you, you'd want to take a little more shooting than you took before, but they still fit the mold of a lot of dudes who will send you to meet your god when they charge you. Like, yes. they're, I don't care if it's corn or Nurgle or whatever, I get in on you, you're going to say hi to them personally. And so I enjoy that quite a lot. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, questions, you're just, bye bye you're dead. Sorry. Blood Angels also are super fast. They can be very quick. Yeah, a lot of their uh, offensive units have jump packs. Mm -hmm. So they fly and they move 12 inches generally. Mm -hmm. And they also have a really, really good suite of special characters. The Sanguinor is probably my favorite data sheet in the game. Mm -hmm. He's super cool. He's just like this, This I mean, he's a lone operative. He has a lone operative word. But he just shows up to defend your guys and fight first whenever you get charged. So... If your opponent charges in, he arrives as the savior uh, oh, whoop. <laughs> from Sanguinius to go and smite your foe before they can hit you. He's super cool. Dante's awesome. Um, Mephiston. Lamarte's. Mephiston's even pretty cool now, which I, uh, I'm i insistent on him. Can we give a shout out to Captain Tycho? Captain Tycho got the biggest glow up of all time. Like, weirdly good now. That's right. <laughs> Astarath is great. Um... Yeah, I'm just, I'm super excited mm -hmm. to keep playing Blood Angels going forward because they just deliver the beats. I know. So up next, I think we have their more secretive cousins. That's right. We've got... The Dark Angels. The lion is back and he is ready to rumble. The Knights of Caliban. Mm -hmm. Currently, there's a mechanic in 10th edition mm -hmm. where if you have taken a bunch of casualties, you can battle shock. Yes. Which you, you fail leadership test, you roll 2d6. If you roll lower than your leadership, you're battle shocked. And ordinarily, that's bad. Mm -hmm. But with Dark Angels, that's good. So ordinarily, you can't use stratagems and you cannot hold objectives. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not really the case with Dark Angels. In Dark Angels, you the fun has only begun. The fun is only just beginning when you fail a Battleshock test because your OC drops to one, which means you can still hold objectives. In addition, there's a lot of upgrades in there that key off of, yeah, here's a buff. It's not a bad buff either. It's like a fine buff. If you're battle shocked, though, it's a huge buff. Yeah. So the uh, the perils of the forty first millennium are not going to dissuade the unforgiven from their hunt for the fallen. No. If they get battle shocked, they like they get scared, and then they realize they shouldn't have been, and then they get back in there harder than before. Yeah. So dark angels are unique amongst the marine chapters, um, and then they kind of have three separate groups inside. They have the Green Wing, which is what you'd think of as standard with Marines. That's their dudes in power armor who walk around. It's their tanks, that kind of thing. There's the Raven Wing, which is their second company, and that comprises all of their bikes and their speeders. Dark Angels have a whole bunch of special, um, like, speeder characters um, and, like, flying units that are awesome. They have some cool, unique planes. And then the last, like, third of the Dark Angels chapter is the Death Wing, which comprises of all their Terminator units. And the Dark Angels have some of the best Terminator units in the game. Yeah. So if you really like sitting in the center and taking damage and having super durable units and Terminator armor with awesome Storm Shields, recommend checking out Dark Angels. Yeah. Dark Angels really do feel like three different chapters mm -hmm. in one, but they, they can all draw from each other. Yep. So you can mix and match to your heart's desire. So the Raven Wing is super fast, generally is like this fast, shooty play style uh, where you're hyper mobile, trying to get lines of sight and shoot people. 
You can go in the complete opposite direction with Deathwing, where you are slow trudging, but like minus one, minus two damage on guys that are toughness five with four wounds. Like, just good luck doing any mm-hmm. kind of damage to that. Uh, and both of those playstyles can mix and match. Mm-hmm. And I think that's super cool. And then finally, as you said, you have Green Wing, which is just generally kind of just Marines. And you can also involve that as well. Um, that's just every other company. Mm-hmm. They tend to like Plasma quite a lot. Um, they just big into Plasma. And you can mix and match those to your heart's content. Go pure Raven Wing, pure Death Wing, mix and match, you know. And then in the center of all that, you have one of the two chapters with a Primarch. Um, and the lion is really good this edition. He's awesome. Yeah, the lion slams. Mm-hmm. The so, lion is great. If you, like me, read the books about the lion, or you just love that model, you can put him on the table and have no fear. Um, and chat really quick, just again, we're going to take all of our super chats at the end of the video. But we will we will get to every single one. Just stay tuned. We're just going to get them all at the end. Yeah. But yeah, the lion is great. You try to kill him, he's got this big storm shield that tells you, please don't do that. It's the Emperor's shield. He's the Emperor's shield. Mm-hmm. He's tough to shoot at. And then if you get in combat, he will fight first with a monstrous damage profile. Yes. So your opponent really needs to think very hard about how they want to deal with the, the uh, Son of Caliban. He really does feel like a Primark now. Absolutely. All right. All right. So what's up next? Uh, let's say you have a Xenos problem. I know. A Xenos infestation, maybe. I know. Uh, who do you call? Who are you going to call? Who are you going to call? The, the Death, Death Watch. Watch. I feel like the Death Watch would have solved uh, Ghostbusters in a completely different way. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Goodbye, New York. So what did the Death Watch do? So the Death Watch are the specialized Xenos Hunter Space Marine chapter. Um, and they represent that on the table in two ways. The first is unlike um, other chapters which can have access to combat doctrines, um, the, Dark Angel, the, the Death Watch are very flexible. So you basically see what your opponent puts on the table, see how they're going to do, and then you get to have options where all of your guys can react a certain way. So if there's a bunch of tanks in your opponent's army, you can be like, all right, this turn, everyone is really good at fighting tanks. Or if there's a bunch of uh, infantry, you can be like, all right, this turn, everyone's really good at fighting infantry. So you're more flexible than other Marine chapters. Also, you have access to this really cool unit called Kill Teams. Where instead of taking a unit of five or ten of the same same kind of guy, so ten guys on foot, you can kind of mix and match. So you can have a unit of ten guys that has three Terminators and a jump pack guy and some guys on foot and then a bike. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, you kind of make your own cool custom unit. Uh, they're the special forces of mm-hmm. the Marines, so they tend to skew more shooty yeah right you're going to tend to get more shooty with them they also teleport around which constantly, is really cool yeah which is yeah it's super awesome they like arrive from teleportation to you know to gun you down they're really cool they have a lot of mobility shenanigans they have a lot of weird rules and they combine the might of uh every chapter which is yes. the idea so the point is that all of the squads are made up of one guy from each chapter which is pretty Pretty awesome. Yep. Yeah. You've been seconded to the Death Watch for a bit. You, t- you do your tour with the Death Watch. You go back to your normal chapter. Mm-hmm. And so as the special forces, like, teleporty around, uh, shooty marines, they're they're super cool. Honestly, mm-hmm. Death Watch have always been really fun to put on the table. Yeah. All right. Last up. We have Whee! the Space Wolves, uh, one of my chapters that I'm going to be handling this edition. That's right. So Space Wolves are awesome. They are definitely a melee-focused faction. Um, unlike, like, Blood Angels... Um, they sacrifice a little bit of their uh, speed of the Blood Angels for a lot more like durability. Um, they have some cool combat tricks and some really awesome characters. Um, this edition, Space Wolves um, get the, their ability revolves around their characters doing deeds called sagas. And every time your one of your characters completes a heroic deed, your army gets a buff that lasts till the end of the game. So. If your guy stands resolute in the face of overwhelming firepower, then your men are inspired uh, and they're less likely to die. Things like that. If you slay a big monster, your guys are inspired and they're more likely to slay monsters. And all of these um, sagas, as you complete them, continue to stack. So at the end of the game, your army becomes really strong and really awesome. Yeah. Um, Space Wolves also have some really cool wolf units. Um, One of my favorite is the Thunderwolf Cavalry. um, Which kind of epitomizes what Space Wolves do, is they have a lot of special weapons and storm shields. Um, and they kind of run at you and they hit you really, really hard when they get there. Yeah, and they tell you, you will deal with me right, right now, now or you will not be able to deal with anything ever again. Yep. So I think that is, that's kind of their, 
mm-hmm. their flavor is they have super good characters. They have super cool characters who hit insanely hard. Yes. Thunderwolf cavalry bearing down on you. Still all the regular Space Marine goodness. Yep. And sagas. Yep. So one really cool thing about Space Wolves is I like a lot is that I think some Space Wolves characters are some of the best in the entire Marine line. Um, think, wait, yeah, like yeah. Ragnar and those yeah. sort of people. They, they both hit really hard and provide really awesome buffs to the unit they're with. Which goes along really coolly with the um, the sagas. Absolutely. Yeah. So they hit really, really, really hard in melee, and they have some unique units that you can take if you feel like being a space wolf guy. You can take long fangs instead of devastators. Very all very slightly alternately themed. Uh, same thing you can take like gray hunters or blood claws or uh, wolf guard things like that. Very slightly different, but you get your own flavor to them. Yep. All right, that wraps up all the Marines. It is possible that other Marine chapters will get um, either indexes, codexes, or whatever. We're not sure right now. Mm -hmm. But it's possible at some point, you know, White Scars get their own, Iron Hands get their own, things of that nature. And then they would get extra flavor on top of that. All right. So into the wider Imperium as a whole, we're going with the Adeptus... The Adeptus Mechanicus. Mechanicus. So what do the Admech do? So the Admech are the weird shooty. Mm-hmm. They uh, they don't tend to function super well up close, although mm-hmm. you can take uh, punch bots, castle and robots with fists, if you want to give it a shot, or rust stalkers or things of that nature. Um, but they don't tend to enjoy being there. What they tend to enjoy doing is having these immortal phalanx or immovable phalanxes of units just shooting you down with... Uh, mm-hmm. with, you know, rad carbines and galvanic rifles and whatnot. Just... Kind of lining up in rows like this is, uh, you know, Waterloo and just going. So uh, on the table, um, the Admech have all kinds of esoteric weaponry and they represent that by a pregame rad bombardment. Where at the beginning of the game, all of your opponent's units take some damage as they they kind of shell you from afar with their um, Fostex weapons and things like that. Yep. And also um, Admech units um, like to be close to each other so they have this kind of overlapping ability where if a unit is next to one of your troops, the rangers or the vanguard, they get an ability that becomes much stronger. So Absolutely. And the rad bombardment uh, bombards their side of the battlefield right at the as an opening salvo. They can either choose to go to ground or take some damage. And if they uh, and over the course of the game, their their side of the board becomes toxic and mm-hmm. can do additional damage to them as it forces you into their guns. Mm-hmm. Um Admech also are one of the supposed to be kind of like versatile factions, where at the beginning of every turn, you're going to select is your opponent is your is your army going to be aggressive or defensive, um, and you pick either a defensive or an aggressive buff. Yep, and that basically is the code that your your tech priests download to your guys, mm-hmm. and then your guys you know go into conqueror doctrine, conqueror imperatives, or um, what is it like defender or bulwark Pre- bulwark imperative, bulwark imperatives like yeah. It's like Conqueror Imperative, Bulwark Imperative, and you download one into their brain, and they go, and then... A lot of their units um, have a mechanic like that, where if there's a leader leading the unit, they can kind of change up what's happening. So like the Castellan Robots, if there's a cybernetic Adatasmith in the unit, he can change what the programming of the robot is on the fly, and the robots do something else now. Yes. It's pretty cool, yeah. So your characters keep you, you know, they keep you flexible, where their units aren't generically flexible. Otherwise, they download the right the right code and your units uh, perform their task. Yep. Right. Absolutely. All right. Imperial Guard, which is like the normie Admech, I guess. I guess, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're the everyman's mm-hmm. of the uh, of the forty first millennium, and by normie Admech, I mean they shoot you, but in more conventional ways. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the Astra Militarum, or the Imperial Guard, as uh, they used to be called. They are the faction of the regular army, mm-hmm. right? So they are the the like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of engagements in the in the galaxy are carried out by the Imperial Guard. Point one percent are carried out by Space Marines yep. at Al, and the Astra Militarum are like waves of conscripts or elite soldiers or a mix of them or tank regiments or artillery regiments or whatever. Uh, if you've read Gaunt's Ghosts, uh, which I have, think I've probably read the whole series at this point, but if you've read Gaunt's Ghosts, these are these are your guys. Mm-hmm. I would recommend it if, you, uh, if you're interested. I would recommend reading Gaunt's Ghosts. I think it's one of the better um, 
Oh, 100%. I love that series. One of the better series that Black Library has put out. I think it's very, very strong. And these are how would your everyman handle, you know, fighting these demigods and super soldiers and demons and Xenos. And the answer is a lot of guns. A lot of guns. A lot of guns, a lot yeah. of tanks. So they're kind of themed like a World War II army. Yeah. Um, but Sometimes World War One. Sometimes World War One. So guard tend to bring a lot of artillery, a lot of heavy tanks, and a lot of infantry um, to the masses. You can kind of mix and match those, or you can go pick one and go really heavily in it. Um, unique amongst the guard um, is their orders mechanic, where guard have really important officers who can join units, and then they can order all of our units to do something cool. So they can say, you know, go fix bayonets and charge that position. Or, you know, double time it, you guys go there. Or go to grounds. Or, you know, first rank fire, second rank fire, where all your guys get extra las gun shots. Yeah, I believe um, that's now a plus one ballistic skill, so it makes them hit better. But, yeah, uh, yeah or let's take aim or something. Something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but the point is that the guard, they have orders, and that's kind of their whole big thing. Absolutely. So... Uh, you tell them, you know, I need you guys to take that hill, go, <laughs> and then they, uh, and then they follow orders. Or you compound your opponents to dust with a, uh, with a tank, you know, regiment, mm -hmm. with an armored regiment, and just shoot them with insanely tough, grindy, slow-moving tanks with big guns. Yes. So you know, lots of frontal armor. Eldar try to skate out of the way of incoming fire. Uh, Lehman Russes and Rogel Dorns and whatnot go right through them and then shoot you back. And if you like rolling fortresses, there's something like 12 Bane Blade varieties you can pick from. Absolutely. Pick the one that suits you the best and have it as the centerpiece. It's an amazing centerpiece for your army. Um, but you can also go, you know, special forces heavy where you take a bunch of uh, Kasserkin or Scions and deep strike around the board and they are you know, the special forces of the guard, mm -hmm. or you go a lot of heavy weapons in place, trench lines, things of that nature, and uh, carry out something thematically between World War One and World War Two. Something uh, around there. Lehman Russes are based off of a, you know, their look is based off of a tank um, from World War One, mm -hmm. And then the Rogel Dorn, I think, is based off of tanks from World War Two. So you yeah. kind of get that, that mix of early uh, 20th century warfare. Yep. That's what you're looking for. What if we go from the, you know, masses of conscripts and big tanks to the uh, Emperor's Elite? The most elite warriors in the entire galaxy. That's right. We're talking the Custodes, mm -hmm. the Adeptus Custodes. So the personal bodyguards of the Emperor of Mankind, one of your favorite factions. What do they do, Jack? That's right. So Adeptus Custodes are the definition of elite. They don't have a single profile in there that is... <laughs> You know, uh, they're the Sisters of Silence, who they're allied with and who kind of fill in a skirmishing role. Mm -hmm. But other than that, the main brunt of their troops does not have a single unit below toughness six, yep. does not have a single unit that doesn't have a two-up save or for, and a four-up invulnerable save and three wounds at least. So a every single custodian guard, uh, whether it's in a Laris armor or a warden or a custodian guard itself, is insanely tough to shift yes very very durable everybody gets a good save in addition they're very flexible because mm -hmm. they have a suite of amazing stratagems to help them pick on the fly how they would like to fight you mm -hmm. as well they have martial katas uh, and martial katas are their unique fighting style and they pick the right one to deal with the right target so your entire army gets one of three buffs in the fight phase every single turn, depending on what's coming your way. And believe you me, Custodes do not hit soft in combat. If you run up on a Custodes army and you do not come correct, you're going to be butchered. <laughs> they hit very, very hard. Mm -hmm. They tend to, they hit on twos across the board because they are the emperor's elite. They yep. are the best in the business. And they have many, many ways to re-roll wounds, so you're going to get clobbered if you try to get close with them, as you should. Do you want to fight those guys? Those guys? Where am I pointing? There. there. You want to fight that guy? You want to fight him? He's like nine feet tall in gold armor with a massive spear. So the way I like to think about it is when you play Custodes, your most basic standard troops 
are a tier above the elite choices of every other faction in the game. That's right. And your elite choices, the especially the Alaris Terminators, mm -hmm. will not let you down. No. Alaris Terminators are the coolest boys in the Imperium. Mm -hmm. They hit like a stack of bricks to your opponent's face and they can teleport into battle mm -hmm. and then teleport around the battle as yep. well. So, big fan of Custodes. They also are remarkably durable against mortal wounds right mm -hmm. now, which is something that you would ordinarily think could kill these mm -hmm. uh, super tough demigods, but they shrug them like no other. Yep, they have special protections from the Emperor himself protecting them. That's right. One thing to be said about Custodes is your forest will be very small. So if you like painting just a few models, Custodes are another good option for you. Yep, if you also like just having durable gold men just standing right in front of your opponent and then being unable to do a single thing about it, they're for you. Yeah. They're for you. All right, so what's up next? Well, something I want to say before we round this out on Custodes is that uh, unlike most of these other factions, they have a substantial amount of models in Forge World as well. Yes. So Forge World is a separate wing of Games Workshop where they produce like lower quantity orders of resin models. Mm -hmm. And so they tend to be more expensive and they have to be shipped from England usually. So they are more annoying to get your hands on. Luckily, with the newest with the design of the newest codex, you absolutely do not need to buy any of them mm -hmm. if you want to play Custodes at the highest level, uh, or at your local gaming store, or on your kitchen table. You can play it with the models that you have that come in plastic from the book. Mm -hmm. If you want to spice it up, you can take some Forge World stuff too, uh, but you certainly, certainly, certainly do not have to. Um, so their best units in the army are all plastic, and so just go off, King. Absolutely. All right. Love Custodes. Love Custodes. Next up, Grey Knights, the demon hunters of the Imperium. So the previously the most elite warriors in the game, they've been displaced by the Custodes. So the Grey Knights are the demon hunters extraordinaire. The job is to go and fight demon and chaos wherever it's found. Um, and they represent that by having every model be a psyker, so they tend to have psychic abilities. And their mastery of the warp allows them to teleport like no other. We thought the Death Watch teleported around, the Grey Knights do it so much better. They have the most movement tricks of any army in the game, except for maybe Eldar. Um, uh, I would say they have the the jankiest movement, like the, the coolest mm -hmm. movement in the whole game. Yeah. So their whole thing is that at the end of your opponent's turn, you can pick up any of your units and they go back into the warp. And then on your turn, they appear wherever you want them to. Yeah, they just like walk through warp portals and whatnot. And mm -hmm. then they come out on that side of the board. Mm -hmm. I believe in a strike force game, every turn you can pick three units up off the board mm -hmm. and put them back down. And that is insane mobility. Yes. So Grey Knights are also a very elite faction. They make use of a lot of Terminators. You can take Terminators as your basic troops. Um, and also all of their guys tend to wear better armor than even other Space Marines. That's right. Everybody across the board has a two-up save, pretty much. So mm -hmm. Strike Marines. All of their Marines have this hyper-crafted armor. Yes. And they're all very durable, and they teleport around, and they're really annoying to deal with. Yes. Also, almost everyone carries a special force weapon, which does more damage than a standard Space Marine in combat, and a better weapon than most Space Marines with their Storm Bolter. That's right. Yeah, their melee profile is better than most Marine combat, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, as they should. As they should be. I mean, they're like a psychic weapon, each one's handcrafted, designed to kill only the strongest of demons. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, they are very resilient, mm -hmm. and they teleport around, and they like to get into close combat. Mm -hmm. Currently, their, their shooting options, they exist, but what you really want to do is you want to get in there and cut people apart in mm -hmm. combat. Great Edge are not a super high damage faction, but they more than make up for it with their high durability and high mobility. Absolutely. You can pull some really, really cool shenanigans with them. And they're just they're just fun to have on the board. They just bounce incoming attacks and they teleport around. I want to give a special shout out to the Mists of Demos, one of their special <laughs> abilities, which means that as your opponent approaches you, your guys turn into psychic mist and can appear elsewhere on the table. It's really cool. That's right. So they can run away when you get close, or they can just teleport as when as soon as you get close to them. I'm gonna go charge that thing. Oh, it was just mist. My yep. bad. All right. I see we have some more super chats, and we appreciate you guys very very much. We will get to them all at the end. Do not worry. We'll go through all of them in order. So feel free to post up Super Chats. We are not uh, ignoring you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Up all right. next, the big boys. The biggest boys. Imperial, the Imperial Knights. Knights. So each of these gigantic mech suits is a dude. 
a dude right up in there behind that head. Mm-hmm. All right. There's a dude piloting this mech suit like we're, uh, what's an anime? Can you give me an anime? Gundam. Thank you. Gun Like we're Gundams. And uh, I don't know if that's an anime. Is that an anime? It's a, I think it's an anime. Okay, cool. Um, and so, <laughs> ignore that. <laughs> Editor, cut that. <laughs> so each one is uh, like we're in Neon Genesis Evangelion. Oh, there we go. There we go. I was, it took me a bit to spin up the old brain. Um, they are gigantic mech suits piloted around the battlefield, living by codes of chivalry, mm-hmm. where they, uh, instead of being a knight on a, you know, on a horse charging into battle, it's mm-hmm. a knight inside a giant mech suit charging into battle. Yeah. And they tend to follow, as I said, codes of chivalry, and they, you know, they have vows of honor before the game where they get certain benefits, and if they can complete a, um, a trial then they will get an even bigger benefit afterwards. They are... I know we said the other ones were elite. Those were elite for infantry. These boys are elite because they are all, you know, big walkers walking around the battlefield. So if you want to run an army with, like, six models in it, knights are for you. Because every one of your guys is going to be awesome, going to be good at shooting, good at combat, and be super durable. That's right. That's right. Because only vehicles. So you have the Questorus class, which are... Um, the one off to the right on the screen there. You have the Dominus class, which is the big boy taking up most of the screen there. Those are the biggest, baddest ones. Uh, the Questorus is the one on the left here. And then you have Armagers, which are the small little bondsmen. They're mm-hmm. the they're like the squires to the big knights. They run around the battlefield in little tinier mech suits, still pretty big by normal mm-hmm. infantry standard, but smaller um, than the big knights. And so you have a little variety there, but... Uh, I think they're, they're, they're a lot of fun to play. You, you basically just run around the battlefield immortal in your gigantic mech suits, you know, delivering the Emperor's justice to people up close and personal. Mm-hmm. You, you can be very shooty in Imperial Knights. Uh, in fact, they're mostly a shooting army, although don't that chainsword is not just for show. No. <laughs> so they will, they will carve you up if you, if you mess around. Mm-hmm. Um, but they tend to shoot very, very hard, and... You know, really pressure your opponent with these gigantic models. Knights and Imperial Knights also have a lot of big panels. So if you want to show off freehanding or you're just getting into painting, they're actually a lot easier to paint than you'd originally expect. Yeah. One thing I also want to um, shout out is that Imperial Knights have a cool rule called Free Blades, where if you want to take one knight or up to three armagers in any other Imperial faction, you're welcome to. That's right. So if you looked at this and you were like, man, I want to get me some robots, want some big battle bots, but. You know, a different army has my heart. Don't worry, you can still include them in your army. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So you can see the coolest knight there is, and you're like, that is mine. He is coming over here, and I am I am playing with him. Yep. All right. Uh, last up for the Imperium would be the Sisters of Battle, the Adeptus Sororitas. Mm-hmm. So the sisters, basically what happened in the fluff was that there was a rebellion by the church, mm-hmm. uh, and... They, they rebelled, and they got put down. Eventually, I forget what the name of the event was, but... Uh, something, like, something with Vandere, I think. Something. Something. I forget. I, I've heard it. I forgot it. Whatever. Here's the point. The point is, they rebelled. It did not work out, eventually. Still bad, though. And in response, they were told, Hey, you can now no longer have men-at-arms under your control. And they were like, Bet, we now have women-at-arms. And they have the, the, no joke, that is how that worked. And because of, you know, the Imperium's big on technical wording, yep. they, they skated. So now they have the Adeptus Sororitas, which, who are the hyper-fanatical foot soldiers of the Imperial Church. Mm-hmm. And they, boy howdy, do they carry that forward. They are all zealots, one and all, uh, for the Imperial Creed. And they express that by getting... Um, the blessings of the emperor. So yes. they believe so hard that the emperor rewards them. And so as they complete act, so you get fate dice, not fate dice, you get miracle yeah. dice. You get, they're basically the same thing, but you get miracle dice, which allow you to foresee prophecies from the emperor, or receive the emperor's divine blessing. And you can substitute them instead of rolling to make sure that a result happens. Yep. So if you want to make sure one of your most critical shots hits, bam, it happens. If you want to make sure that your last hero on an objective survives, bam, you just pass your saves. Yes, they pray to the Emperor and the Emperor rewards them by passing their saves. Yep. Um, in addition, I, I've always just found their fluff to be really fun. Mm-hmm. Right. I love my religious zealots mm-hmm. on the board and they are super fun at that. Yep. In addition, you get access to some of the cooler characters. You get Morvan Vol, who is 
just the coolest model. If you, if you, even if you don't play sisters, get yourself a Morven Vol and paint her up. She is dope. Yep. Um, you also get Saint Celestine. You do. Who comes back to life when you kill her? She's awesome. Yeah, Saint Celestine's cool. Morven Vol is super cool. Uh, they tend to be a mix of shooting and combat, mm -hmm. having units like Repentia and Zephyrum and um, Sacrosant, uh, the Halberd Ladies. Yeah. I forget their name. But I think it's Celestine Sacrosants. Celestines, yeah, uh -huh. Sacrosants. Um, they hit you in combat, and then things like Retributors or a lot of Flamers and Bolters get the job done in shooting. You have a lot of heavy Bolters. You have a lot of heavy Flamers. You have a lot of melted guns. That's they have a lot of melted guns. They like their fire. Mm -hmm. They like purging you with fire. Yep. So sisters are the epitome of what I like. We like to call an MSU army. That means multiple small units. So instead of having like a Stodies, Great Knights, or Knights, just a few really tough, really durable units. You have a ton of stuff, and it's all pretty cheap. So you have a lot of it, um, but all of it dies pretty easily. Yep. But when you get down to critical moments of the game, you can make sure that the Emperor's favor shines upon you. Yes, which is what makes sisters unique on, on like other MSU armies. All right. They're super fun. Please give them a try. Mm -hmm. All right. We are out of the Imperium. The Imperium is done. We're done with the foot soldiers of the Emperor, and we are now into the servants of the great gods. Dun, dun, dun. Chaos. Chaos Space Marines. Chaos. So this is partic in particular Chaos Space Marines, who are the Space Marines that fell to Chaos and their descendants. So mostly during the Horus Heresy. And afterwards, you know, things like the uh, Red Corsairs, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, Space Marines who have turned their back on the Imperium and are now serving, you know, serving the Chaos Gods, Korn, Nurgle, Slanesh, and Zinch. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they are not, uh, they're not taking it chill. They're not no. being casual about it. They have, they do all kinds of crusades uh, against the Black Imperium. Black crusades, even. Black crusades under Abaddon. Um, and... They, they're basically Marines where if you strip out a lot of the shooting options and you add a just insane amount of damage in combat. Yeah. CSM are probably one of the highest damage in the entire game in terms of armies. Absolutely. They hit really, really hard. And they make pacts with the Dark Gods. So <clears throat> every time they go to, to shoot or fight or do whatever, they can decide that they're going to make a pact with one of the big gods in exchange for their power. Mm -hmm. And when they do so, they choose from two special rules, either sustained hits, which gets you extra hits on sixes, or lethal hits, where every six to hit auto wounds. So you can kind of tech which one of those is better into your opponent. And then they have that buff, and they hit you. Now, there is a downside. They take a leadership check immediately, and if you roll less than your leadership on two dice, you take some damage as the warp consumes you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they basically sell their soul for power, and boy, is it a lot of power. Um, they All their units can be marked, mm -hmm. so mark of Chaos Undivided, and then one for each of the gods, Nurgle, Korn, Slanesh, and Zinch, and each mark will do a different thing for you when you do make a pact with that particular god. And they basically are the, as I said, they, they lose a lot of the shooting options. They still have them. Obliterators, the Forge Fiends, fiends yeah. those sort of things still shoot very hard. But they just have fewer options in that department. But boy, does the melee make up for it. Yeah. Possessed, it's... Terminators, anything like that. Abaddon will just remove you from existence. Mm -hmm. So if you want a really, really hard-hitting, semi-fairly durable with some shooting options army, CSM is for you. Absolutely. Uh, and they, like Space Marines, mm -hmm. also have chapters. Mm -hmm. Now... They're different to Space Marines in that they have devolved, uh, not devolved, diverged so much that they cannot use each other. They cannot use the generic Chaos Space Marines units. Mm -hmm. They have, they are an entirely separate uh, codex and index, and as such, are themed as you know descendant chapters, but are not actually descendant actually chapters. like rules wise descendant chapters. Mm -hmm. First up, we've got the Death Guard. One of my favorite. So Death Guard are a slow but very durable and pretty dangerous up close faction. Um, so if you want something fast, Death Guard are not for you. But if you want to just sit there and take damage, Death Guard are where you want to be. Um, their special rule, since they worship Nurgle, the god of plagues, um, is that any unit um, that gets close to you is uh, in your contagion range and becomes less tough. As their guys begin to die of disease, sickness, um, and their armored hulls and plates begin to corrode under warp rust, which is pretty cool. So you kind of want to get there, 
um, get up close and then shoot them with your plague bolters and hit them with your heavy plague weapons and things like that. Yeah, some of their better units currently would be things like probably Mortarian. Mortarian, the Plague Burst Crawler. The Plague Burst Crawler. You like Death Shrouds mm -hmm. with the Lord, Lord of Virulence yeah. to come in and, and just plague spewer things off the board. Um, yeah, they're, they are very, very flavorful. They look super cool. Mm -hmm. They're very fun to paint, very skill expressive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So, I've been painting up a Death Guard army for the streams, um, and I'm every time I paint one of those models, I'm shocked at just how beautiful and detailed every single one is. Yeah, for being one of the ugliest armies, they sure do look gorgeous. Yes. All right. Now going from the followers of the God of Plagues to the followers of the God of Knowledge and Magic, we've got the Thousand Sons. The Thousand Sons. So the Thousand Sons, because they worship the God of Change, mm -hmm. Zinch, uh, started to mutate a lot. And so, to help solve this, um, Aramon, who was one of their foremost sorcerers, along with other of their sorcerers, did something called the Rubric of Aramon. Mm -hmm. And he did it to stop these changes that are mutating everyone into Chaos Spawn. You don't love that. So, he did that change, and it turned everyone who wasn't a psyker to dust. To dust. Their souls psychically imprinted on their armor. Mm-hmm. So, not really what you call sentient, you know? Not really what you call a person in any way, shape, or form. Kind of a walking suit of armor. Yep. Uh, they are also kind of like the Death Guard in that they kind of are slow-moving, durable units. Uh, but they shoot really hard. Um, they are... A lot of their characters and all of their sergeants in their units are psychers. And such have really strong psychic weapons that you can use to blast your opponent to smithereens. Uh, a lot of their weapons are warp inspired and you can, you know, they're warp bolters or warp flamers and you can make the warp bolters psychic if you want so they can channel their psychic energy through them and then buff your guns that way. Mm -hmm. And then you have Magnus who is just super cool, super cool where he buffs everyone around them, makes their psychic weapons even stronger, and he himself hits very hard in combat and blasts people with psychic powers. Mm -hmm. So if you like being, you know, sorcerers, they, you have um, one of the cooler mechanics in 40k at your disposal yeah. as well, which is Cabal of Sorcerers, or something to that effect. But that what that means is that each of your sorcerers generates you psychic power mm -hmm. that you can use, called Cabal Points. And you can spend those Cabal Points on certain effects, certain yep. spells that your entire army can cast. Whether you want to reroll a save, mm -hmm. or you want to blast your opponent with a bolt of very strong magic, or you want to move units again, very strong. You can turn off armor saves. Mm -hmm. Bye. Get out of here. That one's expensive, but boy, is it worth it. It's one of the most powerful abilities in the entire game. It is. Being able to combine the psychic might of your whole army and just bzz off the armor saves of an enemy unit. Or get extra flexibility by using stratagems for free or in addition, additional times. Things of that nature. So it's a very fun, very flexible army. Currently, the army rule is based around using your magic weapons, mm -hmm. which you definitely have some of. <laughs> so you, you definitely have quite a few of those. And they make your psychic weapons even stronger, and then they buff them up. They become good into psychic weapons because um, you have a stratagem to make psychic weapons bad against you. And then you have ways to amp up your psychic weapons. Flexibility with the Cabal of Sorcerers. I think it's a super awesome faction, and I am currently... Uh, playing it in 10th. I'm currently the Art of War coach on Thousand Suns, so I'm excited to give them a shout. Also, Mule with Vortex Beasts are an insane bevy of rules that just do kind of does everything as this mutating aura of change uh, beast. So, super. They cool. are a little bit more difficult to paint because there's a whole lot of trim on there. So, if you, unless you like T Suns, maybe paint up some models before you go right into like Rubric Marines. Absolutely. All right, well, what if you go from a very flexible, can kind of play a bunch of different play styles... Um, to a Blood for the Blood Gods Calls for the Skull Throne? World Leaders! World Leaders! They uh, kind of do what it uh, says on the tin. Yep. They eat worlds. They, all of them. And if you're on that world... Sorry. Sorry, you're getting eaten. Yeah. Uh, these are the devotees of Korn, mm -hmm. the god of war. And as such, they get up close and personal. Mm-hmm. 
It does not please Corn if you kill your opponent from over the hill over there, and then they die all the way over here, and you don't even know if you did anything. All right, artillery does not does not fit Corn's way. You're getting up close and personal with them. You're spilling blood for the blood god. You're you know cutting off skulls for the skull throne. You are hitting your opponent really, really, really hard up close. And you die, they die. Corn cares not from whence the blood flows, as long as war is happening. Yeah. So if you want to talk about the army more generally, if you want a shooting army, don't play this. They yes. have no guns. Like, literally no guns. Some of their dudes have pistols. Sometimes. There you go. Yeah. But you... if you want to hit someone in combat really, really hard, this is the faction for you. Yes. These are your boys if you want to slaughter in combat. Mm -hmm. They have a mechanic called the Blood Tithe or mm -hmm. the blood, Blessings of the Blood God or something to that effect. The rule has name has changed, I think, three times. Yeah. But Blessings of the Blood God... Um, Every turn you roll to mm -hmm. see what favor corn has bestowed upon you. Yep. And you can get a variety of buffs. Mm -hmm. So you roll and it's kind of like uh, Yahtzee. Yahtzee a little bit. You yeah. roll them. You roll like eight dice and you can spend dice out of that pool to get certain effects on your army. And they are very strong. Uh, my current favorite is plus two move advance and charge on your entire army. So you go super fast, or you can make them harder hitting, mm -hmm. or you can make them slightly more durable. Or the coolest one is Angron, who is the Primarch of the World Eaters. Mm -hmm. He is the biggest, baddest boy. He is the size of a house. He can be reborn in blood. He can be reborn in blood. He has been killed before. He'll be killed again. And he, uh, if he goes down, and he, he's that guy right there. That's Angron. Look mm -hmm. at that fella. If he dies, oh, good on you. You know, he's not easy to kill. But you can roll a result on the blood tithe table where you can get him back. Mm -hmm. And he just comes back at full, ready to rumble again, and your opponent probably isn't. And he just shows up and just starts carving through dudes again. It's just kind of his thing. Yep, it's... They're a fun army. They are a fun army. They have one speed and boys going right through your opponent. Yep. <laughs> and uh, if you enjoy that... They're also one of the more fun armies to play against. Because yes. they're very honest in how they mm -hmm. approach things, right? Corn doesn't want deception and trickery. He wants you to get in there and prove your strength and fight, you know, as you should. So They really are the epitome of all gas, no breaks. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Angron, look at that dude. You think he has any breaks? He surely does not. Mm -hmm. All right. So, again, I see we have some super chats in there. We appreciate you guys so much. We're going to get to all of them at the end, and we'll go through each and every single one. Don't worry. All right. Next up, we've got the Demons of Chaos. This Ooh. is the pure raw warp stuff coming mm -hmm. from the uh, other side of the warp and uh this is this is not human at all nope uh this is i mean they are they are generated by psychic you know phenomena they're generated by the collective thoughts and actions of mankind and other races but uh they are not human nope. they are pure warp stuff and they come out of breaches in the warp ready to start ripping things apart they serve one of four Chaos Gods. The either, uh, some of them don't. There's some Chaos Undivided. Bellicor's kind of his own thing. Vashtor's kind of his own thing. But otherwise, they serve Nurgle, Korn, Slanesh, and Zinch. Uh, the God of... Nurgle's the God of Disease. Slanesh is the God of Excess. Korn is the God of War. And Zinch is the God of Change and Magic. So Chaos Demons are kind of like four armies in one. They're a lot like the Dark Angels in that regard, where you can totally mix and match if that's something you want to do, or you can run one god alone. Absolutely. So you'll be unsurprised to know Demons of Corn are like World Eaters, and mm -hmm. that they will get up close and personal and start smacking. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with Zinch is kind of like Thousand Sons, where they don't really want to be up close and personal, mm -hmm. but they kind of do weird stuff and flit around and shoot you. Yep. Nurgle's kind of tough. Slanesh is kind of fast. Mm -hmm. And then you, as you said, you mix and match to your heart's content. Currently, right now, the big demons are very hard to put away. Yep. And Bellacor can be an aura of you can't shoot me outside of 18, so it's very tough to interact with him. So Bellacor is kind of his own thing. He doesn't like any of the Chaos Gods. He's kind of like the scorned like first son. Um, he's the god of shadows. Um, so he cloaks your whole army in shadows so they can't be shot, which is really cool. It's very, very strong, very cool. And uh, he's trying to become a Chaos God. You, to, yeah. you can help him. I know. You can help him. Can he's also him. a super cool model. He's so cool. And something you want to keep in mind here is that these demons can be used by other Chaos armies. Yes, a lot like knights. A lot like knights. So 
you can use up to, I think, 500 points mm -hmm. of Chaos Demons in another Chaos Army. Although, if you are a Chaos Army that has a particular patron deity, mm -hmm. i.e. World Eaters for Corn, Thousand Sons for Zinch, Death Guard for Nurgle, you must only use the, that kind of demon. Yep. So, um, they're very good. You can take a little bit in your army as your army summons them onto the battlefield, or you can take an entire demonic incursion of your own. Mm-hmm. They cloak the battlefield in the, uh, not the shadows of the warp, because that's, uh, I think it, it might even be warp be shadows or something. something. Like that. Yeah, they, they. Shadow of chaos? Shadow of chaos, chaos, yeah. They cast like a pall over the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Your opponent is more likely to run. Mm -hmm. You, as you slowly corrupt the battlefield, you will regen models mm -hmm. as you, you know, you've lost them. So if you're below half strength, you have to take a battle shock. Mm -hmm. And if you pass that battle shock test, i.e. roll higher than your leadership on 2d6, you get models back, you heal wounds, mm -hmm. so you come back to life. And also the army is very um, deep strike focused. Yes, so can... deep strike is where you leave units off the board and then they can, instead of arriving like strategic reserves where they come on the sides, they come on into the center of the board, and they have to be a certain distance away from your opponent. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, that is nine inches, which is a very far away. But if you are in the shadows of chaos, you can show up significantly closer, potentially doing things like charging your opponent or shooting your opponent, being hypermobile. Mm -hmm. That's what the current detachment is flavored around. Yes. All right. Finally, for the armies of chaos, we've got... The Chaos Knights. So the Chaos Knights are a lot like their um, loyalist cousins, the Imperial Knights, but they trade out all of the chivalrous codes for fear and terror. Their whole thing is making your opponent be f afraid, running away, and failing battle shock tests. That's right. So Chaos Knights really like it when you fail a battle shock test mm -hmm. near them. They do all kinds of effects. They can make you take mortals. They can heal themselves off it. They get like plus one to wound against you. They get a variety. There's, there's more than that too. They get a variety of very good effects once you are battle shock so if you are running away they have a lot of great effects they also are an aura of terror mm -hmm. which means that if you have taken any casualties at all you don't need to be below half strength boom you're taking battle shock tests every turn and you're at minus one on that so you're more likely to fail yep so they kind of have this bow wave of terror ahead of them as they come down the battlefield and you get close to them they're just they're very scary like look at that guy that guy's the size of you know, a skyscraper, you want to fight that thing? It's got spikes. Spikes, a lot of spikes. A lot of spikes. Spiky knights. That's right. So instead of being focused around, you know, as you said, living up to chivalrous codes and doing all that, they are trying to kill you and terrify you at the same time. Mm -hmm. In addition, something that they are very strong at is the loyal knights have armagers mm -hmm. who are, they're fine. They're fine. They're fine. They're fine. They are, they're good even. Mm -hmm. But... War Dogs, which are the Chaos Knight version of armatures, are very good. War Dog Brigands shoot insanely hard. Carnivores punch insanely hard. So if you want, like, way better specialized armatures, go to Chaos Knights. Yep. So if you want to play more of the small guys, go Chaos. If you want to play more of the big guys, go Loyalists. That's right. And Chaos Knights still take some amount of the big knights. Mm -hmm. You can make a Knight Tyrant that is insanely hard to shift with a massive flamer and a massive harpoon mm -hmm. you can also run a desecrator who makes all your little knights reroll ones to hit which is super cool and has this massive turbo laser to shoot people with mm -hmm. things like that you can take a despoiler i want to say which can get double gun mm -hmm. so they're a little less set in their ways mm -hmm. than um imperial knights where you can take some weird offbeat stuff in chaos knights all right that wraps us out for Chaos. All right, so going on, over to Xenos. Now we're going over to Xenos. So these are the various alien factions, right? We've got Imperium, who are humans of various flavors, and then we've got uh, Chaos, who are generally corrupted humans. Yes. Um, now we're going to aliens, like full stop. These yep. are not human. Mm -hmm. First up, Eldar Craft Worlds. I know, one of my favorite factions, probably my favorite faction. Um, the Craft World Eldar are the epitome, generally speaking, of the Glass Cannon. So all of your guys are super fast, do a ton of damage, but they're really fragile. Um, yeah. So if you want to sit in the middle and take damage, Eldar are not the faction for you. But in exchange, what you get is a ton of the best, some of the best movement tricks in the game, where you can shoot someone and then run away. You can run away in your turn. You can move really fast to get angles. You can kind of draw a line of sight through some of your other tanks. They're, they're really cool. 
They're really cool. So they are a dying race. Yes. They are super ancient, and they accidentally spawned Slanesh, mm -hmm. and that kind of spelled the end for them. It's been a little slow going, but uh, eventually it will catch up with them. Uh, all of their souls go to Slanesh when they die, so they wear, what is it? It's a soul stone. soul stone, which captures their soul when they die. And instead of going to Slanesh, it goes into the Soul Stone, and then they add it to... The uh, Infinity Circuit. The Infinity Circuit. Yeah. I, so, if you want to give yeah. a little, little, little fluff on that, you are the man for that. I know. So, um, the Infinity Circuit... So, the Eldar don't live on planets. They live on these giant spaceships called Craft Worlds. And in the center of their Craft World is basically a shrine where they house the souls of all of their ancestors. Um, and so, the Eldar are perpetually fighting to protect their home worlds, because if their home worlds, their home spaceships are destroyed... All of their souls of them and all of their ancestors are devoured and they basically go to super hell. Um, <laughs> it's not it's, pretty. It's like hell, but it's, but it's personal this yeah, time. Yeah, it's, it's personal this time. Um, so like I said, they're, super, they're, they're not super elite actually on the table at the top. They tend to have a lot of small units. Um, and they also have really, really powerful psychers. Their farseers are some of the best psychers in the entire game. They give out awesome buffs. And they're so skilled that unlike other races... They don't have any dangers when they're traversing the warp. They just do their buffs, and if they don't go off, whatever, it's fine. Try again next time. You don't die. Yeah. They um, have a variety of really fast, hard-hitting units mm -hmm. that tend to try to be specialized. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Striking Scorpions, really good up close. Um, Howling Banshees, same deal. Dark Reapers, not so much. Yep, good so, at long range. Good at long range. So... An Eldar dedicates themselves to one kind of path of war, mm -hmm. and then they follow it... Uh, you know, and they, they try not to lose themselves in obsession because they're really they're really prone to that. Mm -hmm. So Eldar have one, you know, each of their units has a very hyper focused way of going about things. They tend to be more of a shooting army. Mm -hmm. Tend to be. They tend to be more of a shooting army as they're fragile with high mobility. Um, and right now their army mechanic mm -hmm. is that they have fate dice, mm -hmm. which you roll at the start of the game as you read the strands of fate, mm -hmm. and then you can substitute those dice in for any kind of wound or any hit, wound, save, or whatever. They're all like want. miracle dice. They're a lot like miracle dice, except they're very front loaded, and your farseers can change them to sixes once a turn as you use them, which is a super powerful mechanic right yes. now. Yes. So um, one thing to talk about is if you do want to play Eldar and you want to play something kind of durable, there is kind of an alternate almost like sub-unit type in the faction. That's the Wraith Units, which is basically constructs holding the ghosts of their fallen ancestors. Um, they put the Soul Stones in them. That's a Wraith Knight right there. Yep. They're very slow, but they're very durable. And um, I think I can see they're quite good right now. Yes, right now they are probably a little bit uh, too good. <laughs> a little bit too good. A little bit too good. But um, the army as a whole is very fun, flavorful. It's been great every single edition. And um, we're looking forward to see what they do with them. Uh, Craftshield Eldar also houses Harlequins now, which are no longer their own separate unit, but are the um, maniacal space clowns, which are like faster melee Eldar, which you can just take if you would like in a regular Eldar detachment, or you can run all Harlequins if that's your thing. Yes. So let's say you don't use Soul Stones, right? You have some other way of cheating the Slanesh, uh, the Slanesh pull. Mm-hmm. You would be the Drukari. The Dark Kin, another one of my favorite factions. Yep, Dark Eldar. Mm -hmm. So they're like Eldar if they had no chill. Yep. So they live in um, in a city in the webway called Kamora. Mm -hmm. I learned the pronunciation of that recently. I always called it Kamarag, but it's Kamora. Mm -hmm. And they live in that city where they kind of hide from Slanesh. Mm -hmm. And then they go on raiding parties. Yes. And unlike most parties, these are not fun. No. All right? They're you, fun for them. They're fun for them. They enjoy them for sure. Uh, they are sadistic, twisted. They are not very much fun to be around. They go on raiding parties to go uh, kill and capture prisoners mm -hmm. to be slaves. And they take them back. They do horrible experiments on them. They, these guys are the bad guys of 40k. These guys are not, not nice. No. So, um, unlike the strands of fate that the Eldar have, the Dark Eldar um, have a mechanic called Power from Pain. Um, where as you kill units or units run away, you get pain tokens, which you can then spend at certain points in the game to make your units much stronger. So basically, you feed off the pain of your opponent. Absolutely. So, basically, what happens is uh, they don't want to use soul stones. To avoid, to avoid the slanesh, to avoid slanesh, mm -hmm. what they do is they feed off the pain of their victims. Yes. And that pain of the victims goes to slanesh instead, mm -hmm. and so it, it shields them from slanesh's wrath. Yep. 
Um, also, Drakari generally tend to be more of a melee army, whereas Eldar are more of a shooting army, is kind of how you think of it. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, they have some of the better weapons in the game with Dark Lances, mm -hmm. some of the better shooting weapons. Um, and then Power from Pain lets you reroll to hit on as many Everything. units as you have power, pain tokens to power up. And they can shoot quite hard. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, things like Incubi with rerolls mm -hmm. can hit quite hard. They are, as you said, yeah, the melee focused elves. Of, yeah, yeah, elves. They're also very, very fast. They are probably the fastest unit, the fastest army in the game. Yes, but mm -hmm. they take craft worlds to an extreme. Yes, they are faster than Eldar, but they are also somehow more fragile. Way more fragile than Eldar too. So this is the uh, the gentlemen's. Yes, you know the real refined gentleman who knows exactly what they're doing, sort of game. Mm -hmm. You know, you you are better than normal. You have your pinky out when you uh, when you drink water, exactly, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so they are hyper fast, and they are very fragile. So you got to make sure you know exactly what you're doing, but they can give you a lot of power out of that. Yes. All right. Next up is the Great Destroyer, the, the Great Tyranids. Devourer, the Tyranids, bugs. So these are, if you've seen Alien, these are like kind of like aliens from Alien. Um, they are extra galactic horrors that uh, only exist to feed on biomass. So they come to a planet and they strip it down to barren rock and leave nothing in their wake before they move on to the next one. Yes. These guys are probably the, uh, the final boss yes. of the galaxy because they have swarms coming from the left side of the galaxy, the right side of the galaxy... And then finally up through the bottom of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And um, they these swarms are humongous. Uh, taking up a sizable percentage of the gal galactic size mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the dimensions of their fleet. And they're alien horrors without number. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they come to a planet and they hit it with just overwhelming buggage. Mm -hmm. And then they devour every single thing on the planet. The water gets siphoned away. All the biomass gets devoured. Even the uh, minerals get stripped out of the very soil itself until it is a completely dead sphere with nothing left on it. And then they go to their next planet. Yep, and they eat it all the same. That's right. And they just devour until somebody stops them. Yep. Or doesn't, uh, specifically. So Tyranid Hive fleets are incredibly dangerous in the in the fluff in the uh, story of the game and they just devour and devour and devour everything in their path almost impossible to stop it's basically any time a high fleet or a splinter of a high fleet hits a sec uh, section of the imperium it is life or death fight for every planet in there they call in reinforcements from everywhere to make a big crusade of it and still probably lose some most of the time yep. so um, on the tabletop um the tyranids tend to be a like short to mid-range army with lots of combat and mid-range shooting but not a whole lot of long-range shooting um that has relatively durable very cheap units you have a ton of stuff on your table yeah, so you can go swarms where you take a lot of little bugs. You can go kind of, there's medium bugs like warriors and raveners and venomthropes and zoanthropes, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and you can take those or you take the big monsters like yes. winged hive tyrants like you can see on the screen or the turvagon. Carnifexes. Or the carnifexes. The brand new screamer killer. Or, yeah, that guy is real cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Exocrines to shoot, tyrannifexes to shoot, um, mollocks coming up out of the ground trigons just gigantic gigantic bugs as you can see on screen hmm. these are the toxicrine in the background so the two things that to do that make them special is their units are very adaptive um so the beginning of the game depending on what your opponent's army is you select one um, ability and all of your bioforms adapt to counter that so if there's a bunch of tanks you're like ah oh, we're good at fighting tanks now bunch of infantry we're good at fighting infantry now Yep, and that is, it's a very fun mechanic. They're hyper-adaptive, because yes. this is an invasion fleet. Mm -hmm. uh, and otherwise, their army mechanic is Shadows in the Warp, mm -hmm. where they can, once a game, overload your opponent's army with like a bunch of psychic mm -hmm. nonsense, just because the bugs also are have a lot of psychic power. They have a lot of big brain bugs running around, mm -hmm. and the Hive Fleet has its own presence when it's over a world. Yes. Uh, so the Hive Fleet's presence over a world is reflected in once a game. You can make everybody take a battle shock test. Yes. Every single opponent unit uh, can just take a battle shock test, and it sucks if you fail it. Also, um, a lot of their small bugs are kind of like wimpy when they're alone. They run away at the light of the smallest thing. 
Um, but if they're in synapse, they're much less likely to run away. And they're in yeah. synapse if they're kind of near one of the big bugs. It's kind of like like a cell phone tower effect. Yep. So the hive fleet is like one hive mind controlling everything. Mm -hmm. But if the bugs are out of control of their hive mind, as you said, they're, they're a lot less strong. They're not as good. Mm -hmm. So the hive mind needs to have you know local bugs keeping control of all of the different uh, units on the tabletop. Yep. And if you do so, then you get better at passing Babble Shock as the hive mind enforces its will over its peons. Yes. All right. So, believe it or not, this all devouring um, entity mm -hmm. does have human servants. It does. Uh, gene stealers are one of, like, they're basically the spec ops of mm -hmm. the Tyranids. And when they get to a planet, they can infect it. And they infect it with gene stealer cults. Yes. So, gene stealer cults are the. Um, the descendants of people that have been implanted with gene stealer DNA. Mm -hmm. And over time, they worship gene stealers and they worship Tyranids and they become more and more Tyranid like mm -hmm. over time until eventually they start birthing pure strain gene stealers. Mm -hmm. As you can see, doesn't look exactly human. Some of them do, some of them do not. Yes. And uh, I actually think they look more and more human over time, and then like more eventually and more, they become a pure strain. Eventually, it's a pure strain. Yes. So it's like it, it. You go from like metamorphs and hybrids and whatever to the more human-looking elements, and then all of a sudden, gene stealer. Yes. Uh, they are basically like revolutionaries yes. on whatever planets because the Imperium is a crappy place to live. Terrible. They have a point, mm -hmm. and the point is that the Imperium is. Uh, you know, crazy, homicidal, worky-to-the-bone place to live, mm -hmm. uh, hyper-religious, insane fanaticism. So gene stealer cults generally have a good point. They just... Which is, when they rebel against a planet, it's generally as like a workers' revolution sort of deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, they rebel against, you know, the, the religion on the planet, and they rebel against the... Uh, like, usually they work in hive cities mm -hmm. or... Or things where it's an entire planet just designed to mine, or an entire planet designed to work you to the bone, and they rebel against that, like the administratum on the planet. Uh, but little do they know, they are serving uh, aliens who will eat them uh, when eventually they come to call. So they basically look to create unrest and overthrow the um, the established order, overthrow the Imperium, who has a tyrannical rule. So yes. they do have a point there. Um, they overthrow the tyrannical rule and they await their great saviors from the skies. Mm -hmm. And then when the great saviors from the skies show up, everyone gets eaten and turned into biomass. Yay! <laughs> um, so the genes, they're called to on the tabletop. Um, they plan their day of ascension for generations to plan generations in the making. Um, and you don't expect them. You think it's just a little cult and then they come out of the sewers, out of the grates, out of the trees. Um, and that's represented by a, being another really heavy deep strike focused army. So typically right. you don't put your units on the tabletop. They come on turn two or turn three. And when they appear, they appear and they, get, they catch your opponent in crossfire and in ambushes. And they get a bunch of bonuses when they set up on the table. That's right. That's right. And they also worm their way into all kinds of structures in the government because they look human enough. Mm -hmm. uh, especially when a planet is starting to really get corrupted. People start becoming accepting of vaguely gene stealery looking people. Or they prefer that. And uh, they start to worm their way into all kinds of structures of the government and in mm -hmm. the military. So you might find, you know, sectors, sections of, you know, the administratum mm -hmm. working alongside them or sections of the Imperial Guard, the Astra Militarum, working alongside them as well. And that is portrayed through Brood Brothers. Mm -hmm. So if you're running Gene Circle, you can include some Imperial Guard because you have corrupted some of the Imperial Guard, some of your acolytes and neophytes and whatnot have wormed their way into the Imperial Guard and have taken over elements of it. Yep. And so when you do your Day of Ascension and do your revolution against uh, the, you know, the tyrannical government, some of the Imperial Guard turns on other parts of the Imperial Guard and starts a big war that way. One last thing to note is that because the Gene Star cults have so such great numbers, they're without numbers, whenever you uh, kill one, there's more waiting in the wings. Um, there's a good chance that your uh, unit, instead of being destroyed, basically gets put back off the table and can appear once more as yes. a new replacement unit takes its place. 
That's right. So it feels like you're fighting less of an army in front of you and more of an insurrection all around you. Yes. As units just pop up here, I deal with that, pop up here, deal with that, pop up here. Oh, God, I'm getting overwhelmed. Ah. Yeah. One thing to note about the Tinsular Cult is they have that cool mechanic, but they have one of the lowest durabilities in the game. And unlike Eldar, once they're on the table, you can just kind of shoot them and they'll die. Yes. Yeah. They are very fragile, but they come without number, come from every angle, mm -hmm. and just pop up here, pop up there, and eventually drag you down. Yes. All right. So that was Gene Steeler Cult. Let's get into uh, kind of mutated humans, the squats. The Leagues of Votan. Yeah, they don't like being called squats from no. what I understand. Technologically uh, advanced abhumans that have kind of become their own race and they have their own civilization beyond the bounds of the Imperium. Um, the Leagues of Votan are a very durable, relatively slow-moving, good shooting army with some awesome combat punch. Yep, their their flavor is that they are hyper-capitalistic. Yes. And they have various, uh, you know, trade alliances and whatnot who all go out to protect their mining interests. Mm -hmm. And they are in it for the profit. Yes. Uh, they're very self-interested in that way. And so they kind of just look out for number one. Which number one being their whole, like, their race. Their, that's right. Or the their particular, particular alliance or clan or yeah. whatever. So um, they're very fraternalistic. They really care about the um, their kin, as they called them. Um, and if you kill one of their kin, then they're really really don't like you, they're going to judge you extra hard, and they get a ton of bonuses against yeah, you. Yeah, that'll be a grudging. That's you know, a grudging. They, uh, they also have AI, which is mm -hmm. not something that... The Imperium has banned AI. These guys are outside the Imperium, so they have AI. So they have some more technologically advanced stuff, like land fortresses, hover bikes, mm -hmm. um, better weapons, things yes. of that nature. And as you said, yeah, uh, they every time you kill one of their units, you get a judgment token, and if you stack up one judgment token on yourself their army's plus one to hit you. Mm -hmm. And if you have two, they're also plus one to wound you. Which is so. a very strong bonus. Very strong bonus. So units with multiple judgment tokens on them don't tend to survive for long. No, not at all. Um, that's that's currently their play style. Very slow, and if you hit them, they hit you back harder. Yes. Um, they're, all like, they're a lot like a Death Guard, um, but instead of like a debuff army, they're like a focused, like, you're dead. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Uh, they, they don't tend to do super well in combat, although they can exist there. Mm -hmm. They tend to really like to just blast you with super futuristic weapons. Yes. Speaking of super futuristic weapons. Super futuristic wow, weapons. so good at segues. I know. Um, Necrons, the previous rulers of the galaxy, the Necron tier. 16 million years ago. That's right. So a long, long time ago, the Necron tier were a race mm -hmm. uh, that was very, very short-lived. Yes. Right. They would constantly live, die, repeat, or whatever the slogan of that uh, mm -hmm. that movie was. They would so they would die very, very quickly. They wouldn't live for very long. Their dynasties had a half life of like twenty years or something. Yeah. Um. So they found they were they were a moderately successful race, but they found the Catan or mm -hmm. Star Gods, and these are instead of being gods like um, from the warp, mm -hmm. so a reflection of humanity or whatnot. These are gods of nature, mm -hmm. basically gods of, like, natural phenomena. So you might have, you know, um, they, they basically control the stars and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and there's the Nightbringer, who's, like, a big shadowy figure that is the inspiration, apparently, uh, thematically, the inspiration behind all kinds of, like, fear of the dark and things like that. Um, and they made a deal with the Catan to um, give up their bodies and become metal. And mm -hmm. they would live forever. And they realized a little bit too late that uh, it wasn't really a good idea. It really wasn't to their benefit, and the Catan were tricking them. Yes. So basically the Catan feasted on their corpses and their souls and whatnot, and the Necrons became metal men. They got yes. their souls transferred over to Necrodermis, Mm -hmm. which is like a living metal. Mm -hmm. And uh, they lost a lot of their, not I'm going to say humanity, but basically they lost their humanity there, mm -hmm. where um, they became cold, unfeeling robots who d don't uh, don't really have that spark of life or soul in them anymore. Nobles, uh, higher-ups in the casts, they retained most of their personality. They, they're mostly fine, although some of them went mad over centuries. But the general foot soldiers are a little more than, than robots. They're a little more than automata. 
So if you like to play Undead or Death in other factions, this is what you want to play, because Necrons have a really cool re called reanimation protocols, which is kind of like the dead rising again, where every time you kill one of their guys, there's a really high chance they just come back to life. Yes, so the way it works is every turn, a whole wave of your army comes back to life as units are replenished with ranks of their dead coming back to life. And until you wipe a unit completely off the map, it doesn't stay dead. In fact, it will probably be back to full strength. Relatively soon. Relatively quickly. So they're just waves of undead. If you play Age of Sigmar, these are your Soulblight Gravelords. As you said, mm -hmm. these kind of have the undead feel mm -hmm. in that they are basically undead metal machines mm -hmm. made of living metal that will reassemble and come back to life unless you like step on their corpse real good like. Yes. So Necrons on the tabletop are a relatively slow army. They don't do a lot of damage, but they have probably the highest durability of any army in the game. I would say so. They just don't die ever. You can wail on Necrons for an entire game and get nowhere. No, like literally you kill nothing. But they also don't have like a ton of damage output themselves. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see a full game basically every yes. time. Mm -hmm. And you get this kind of like grindy back and forth game that I think is super cool. Mm -hmm. You can also field star gods, mm -hmm. the Catan. You can feel it because they, they didn't take kindly to the whole being used as foot soldiers in a, you know gigantic war and being turned into metal machines with no feeling or emotion. Um, and eventually they rebelled against the Catan and they yes. split them up and imprisoned them because uh, you can't kill them. But you can split them up, and when they split them up, they cage them and reduce a lot of their power, so now they control the Catan, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And so you can take shards of Catan, so shard, so that one on screen there, that big glowy guy with the lightning, that is the Shard of the Void Dragon, or mm -hmm. a Shard of the Void Dragon. Yes. And he is basically a star god of technology, mm -hmm. and he will mess with all kinds of vehicles. There's the Nightbringer, the Deceiver, and then just generic Transcendent Catans. They are hyper tough, just have super cool effects. They also have esoteric weapons mm -hmm. from before the Imperium was even a thing. Yep. Um, they have things such as, you know, you see all their guns there, super powerful, but especially the big ones. So things like the Doomsday Arc or the Doomstalk or anything with a gigantic gun will let, will make you feel it if you're on the other yeah. side. Yeah, so Necrons have a lot of big guns that are paired with immortal foot troops, and that's kind of their play style. Absolutely. Super cool, super fun, very grindy, very enjoyable if you like that play style. Yes. All right, next up, the orcs. The orcs. The orcs. So these guys are uh, a race of fungal creatures. Fungal creatures, yeah. Yes, who live for, basically live for battle. Yes. So the way that they reproduce, basically, is you kill them and their body is spores that then mm -hmm. make new orcs. So they like fighting. And as orcs fight, they get bigger. And as they, as they get bigger, they have, gain in prestige. And as they fight, they get even bigger on top of that. And you end up with these big orcs rampaging around the battlefield, um, supported with hordes of, you know, boys mm -hmm. and Gretchen. So um, orcs traditionally are a melee-centric horde army with hilarious shooting. I say hilarious because it's very swingy. Their stats are all super great, but their odds of hitting you are very small. Um, so if you like rolling buckets of dice and hoping that you roll high, orcs are for you. Yeah. Um, Most shooting armies mm -hmm. hit on threes, occasionally twos, mm -hmm. and even the armies that hit on fours, which we'll get to in a second, have ways to offset that and hit on threes. Orcs don't. Nope, they hit orcs, on fives and sixes. Orcs hit on fives and sixes, and the way they offset that is to just chuck scads of dice at it. Yes, it's hilarious. Yeah, so, um, you know, they might not have two shots that hit on threes. They might have eight shots that hit on fives, yeah. you know, things like that nature. They also pack a lot of attacks up mm. close, and they really like punching. They have, yes. you know, mega knobs. They have uh, squig hog boys, like you see in this picture here, mm. who bring down tanks and monsters. And they just have this rampaging horde of, of boys running across the battlefield looking to get up close and hit you. And then once a game, they can call a WA, mm -hmm. and their entire army uh, can gets a whole range of buffs. Yeah, tons. As as their leader, you know, screams out, they all scream with them. If you've ever been to a tournament and somebody calls a WAG, um, yeah. everybody starts shouting, and it's like it is it is basically what it feels like to be on the battlefield, where the entire battlefield erupts in one gigantic roar mm -hmm. and then charges you. Yep. <laughs> 
So once a game, they get like a gigantic suite of buffs across their whole army and get stuck in. And uh, it's basically entirely a melee army, yeah. for sure. It's, it's a melee army. They have some shooting, but it tends to be, it's not like good. It's just very funny and sometimes it works. Um, Some, sometimes it's good. Sometimes flash kits, for are, example, flash kits are very good. ridiculously hard. Yes, for no reason. Orcs also have a ton of like very ramshackle vehicles, and you never know exactly what you're going to get out of orc vehicles. That's right. Uh, one of the coolest rules in the game is Kareen, which is mm -hmm. a one CP stratagem. If one of your vehicles blows up, yes, you just move it. <laughs> so you get to, if your vehicle is about to explode, the guys drive it towards the enemy, and it blows up in their lines instead of your lines. That's right. It's very funny. It is super cool. Orcs are also kind of have like a like a just all psychic consciousness. Yes. Which um, means that they're really good at doing anything they believe in. Yes. Um, so depending on the writer, you can get a thing like a box with a bunch of bolts, like a bunch of like literally nuts and bolts in it and mm -hmm. nothing else. It's just rattling around. Well, if enough orcs believe it'll shoot bullets, it'll shoot by bullets. God, it'll shoot bullets at yes. you. <laughs> Uh, or it just means that they're, you know, depending on the writer, or it just means that their technology works better than it should, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Um, as it is, you get things like that dude on screen right now, who just has this gigantic walking, clanking mech suit, just like clank, 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 chunk, chunk, chunk. Um, and you get this uh, aesthetic you don't really get on, in other armies. If you want a ramshackle, very fun hobby project... Um, but you can kind of do whatever with. If you want prime conversion fodder, orcs are for you. Yes. If you want to make your own models, make your own tanks or whatever out of plastic card, mm -hmm. uh, orcs are the perfect canvas for that. Yes. All right. Last up, we've gone through all of the armies except one. Mm -hmm. We've got the last alien race. We've got the Tau Empire. Kind of the exact opposite of orcs. Um, and then instead of kind of the ramshackle effect, you have very smooth, very clean armor lines. That's right. So you've got mech suits, you've got battle suits that they pilot around. They have very advanced weaponry mm -hmm. that they developed very quickly. They're very good at developing weaponry very quickly. Um, they're very good at, at developing innovation very quickly. And they're not stuck in their ways like the Imperium no. is. So they're constantly developing. They use more modern battlefield tactics. Um and they have cool mech suits flying around, delivering the ranged beatdown. Yes. Tau are, like, to a hilarious extent, the worst army in the game at melee combat. They are world leaders, but reversed. So, like, if you want to hit someone in combat, don't play Tau. Your guys don't do damage in combat. Like, it's just not worth rolling their attacks, so you just won't do anything. Yes. But it, if you want to shoot somebody, play Tau. Yes. Uh, world Eaters, but Flipped is the perfect way to describe them. Yeah. They do not a gosh darn thing in combat yep. at all. Um, but they level you with shooting, and mm -hmm. they tend to be very, very quick. They like to follow two different, one of two different philosophies, mm -hmm. either Montka or Kao Yan. Mm -hmm. uh, Kao Yan is the patient hunter, mm -hmm. where you draw people into traps, and you then you shoot them with, you know, like, you basically surround them and shoot them from all sides mm -hmm. in, in traps. Like, you wait for your opponent to come to you and shoot them. Uh, Montka is the opposite. You go to your opponent and relentlessly seek them out. And, and you shoot and, them really hard. And then the you face. shoot them again. Yes. Uh, they, they don't have multiple ways of solving that issue. They basically, there's a lot of stuff that they do and then they shoot you with a gun. Yep. Um, but they tend to be very quick. They have really cool models. Yes, um, they do. Tau Army looks sweet. And um, I, I mean, I've enjoyed playing them. Richard really enjoys playing them. I you, like playing them. You like playing them. Yeah. They're really fast, they shoot very hard, and they have uh, a bunch of really cool models. Mm -hmm. And currently, their detachment is Kao Yan. So mm -hmm. we haven't seen Mont Kai yet, their detachment is Kao Yan, where if you, sight, uh, if you sight in on a target later in the game, mm -hmm. your army gets a massive amount of hits on them instead yeah. of the normal amount. So Tower are also a very synergistic faction, where the army as a whole is much greater than the sum of its parts. So if you like that kind of play style, where what they do is if you have some guys that are spotters and some guys that are shooters, so if your spotters, you know, put mark, like lights on the target and they say, hey, shoot here, they upload it to a computer, then the guys with guns can shoot it, they do a lot more damage than if they just shot alone. Absolutely. They also have masses of drones, as you can see next to Commander Farsight up there, mm -hmm. uh, who are like slaved AI, yep. who are designed to help you out in the battle, and they give you they give your units a whole bunch of extra rules. Yeah, so some gun, some drones carry extra guns, some guns have for, drones have force seals that like eat damage for you first. 
Um, some drones can protect you from getting hit in combat. All kinds of cool things. Absolutely. So Tower are a very mobile, mm-hmm. dynamic shooting army, right? Yes. They, they do one thing, but they do it in a million different ways, and their models are, quite frankly, super cool. Yeah. If you like big robots, play Tau. Absolutely. All right. That is every single army in the game. I Quite know. That is... We have a whole bunch of super chats. We do. So if you liked this video, please let us know down below. We really appreciate having any comments down there. Or if you subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this. Um, or if you, uh, you know, leave a comment down below letting us know what you think. Or subscribe to our channel. It really, it really does help us out a lot. Uh, we passed 40, uh, 40K subscribers I know. recently. It's a big deal for us. Uh, we passed 40,000. Thank you so much to all of you for helping us with that. And if you want to go to The War Room, which mm-hmm. is our community where you can learn the game and become your best and meet other people like you who are as passionate about 40K as you are, then uh, go to the link below at thewarroom.vhx.tv where you can try out a three-day free trial of everything we have to offer. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get into the Super Chats, and then that rounds us out for today. All right. All right, first up, we've got the coolest name here, Nobs Burgers. Nobs Burgers. It says, happy Monday, dudes. Loving the content, especially when it's orky. Stay cunning. We love you, Nobs Burgers. Thank you, Nobs Burgers. Thanks. Yeah, I yeah. will strive to make as much content orky as possible, because orcs, wow. are, orcs are in my wheelhouse. Uh, I will stay cunning, but also brutal. All right, we've got Feels Bad Man 69 Hello guys, Jack, I just ran a 10-man squad of flash kits with Bad Druck this Sunday, and boy did they shred. Next thing to try will be a gargantuan squigoth. Absolutely. Yeah, the the 10 man flash kits. I've been on the receiving end of the yes, 10 man flash kits. Yes, you have, buddy. Yes, you have. 10 man with flash kits with Bad Druck shoot ludicrously hard. And because they have massive rerolls and have extra hits on sixes, they're very good at Overwatch as well. So when your opponent you run out, shoot hit something very hard when your opponent moves out you shoot them again hit something super hard and they're not easy to kill as you found out love me love me some flash kits gargantuan squigoth also i mean is the size of like a basketball yeah like a flat basketball it is um huge we don't actually have one but i want to fix that we're gonna fix that we're gonna fix that that thing is just a gigantic football of resin i'm getting a titan soon yeah yeah i'm gonna nice. put it on the table against Teague's manta Oh, I'm getting a, uh, an, a an Astraeus. Oh, that'll be fun. A Blood Angel's yeah. Astraeus. So, does... Wait, hold on. The the Manta's 2,100 points. The Titan's 1,100. I'm going to get multiple Titans. That's probably what you're going to have to yeah. do. Yeah, um, Yeah. absolutely. 10 man with Flash Gets uh, and Badruck, and then a Gargantuan Square Off. You can even put them in the Gargantuan Square Off. You don't get any of your shooting buffs, but it's really hard to kill them, and then you can eventually get out and shoot at full efficacy. All right. All right. Caps Boy, $5 Super Chat. I want to take two jets from the Dark Angel range and put them in a list with Black Knights and Samael and a black uh, Bite Captain. Good list or bad? I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Black Knights are quite solid. They shoot respectably hard. What I would probably want to try for, for you is uh, taking a Bike Chaplain. Mm-hmm. Because a Bike Chaplain points at a target and gives his unit devastating wounds against that target. And he can join Black Knights and Ravenwing Command Squads. Mm-hmm. And so having your Plasma with devastating wounds... is very good. It's very good. Yes. So I'd give that a shot, but uh, same thing with Talon Masters. Mm-hmm. Talon Masters are very good because they're very hard to shoot at, and they just put out a, a low amount of shots every turn. I think you that's you can take two Talon Masters list. and put them next to each other, and then neither could be shot. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. All right, we've got Grim's Instinct five dollars super chat. Got evaporated by Imperial Knights at Boise Cup. My Black Templars got tabled at turn three. Towering, towering. That is uh, that is a bit rough, my man. Yeah. Um, I, I do think tournaments will start putting in more, uh, you know, bottom floor blocks line of sight completely yes. terrain, which will help out the Imperial Knights matchup, because otherwise they can just kind of see you and just shoot you. Blast is also quite good on big, into big squads. It is. It is, for sure. And they have a lot of blast weapons. Mm-hmm. Uh, potentially some Lancers, some Gladiator Lancers can uh, ease your sorrows a little bit, because yep. they hit quite hard in shooting. Uh, we have Eric Autre, Autret. Uh, welcome to the War Rune Bronze. Thank you so much. Glad mm-hmm. to have you here. Alex M5977, welcome to the War Rune Bronze. Again, glad welcome. to have you in. We have Doug Henningsen with a $5 super chat. Says, love custodies right now. Do you think a unit of six Alars is necessary slash most competitive? I've been running three by two. I don't think it's necessary at all, but I think it is very good. So if you want to run three by two, more power to you. You're all set. 
If you want to take a unit of six, it's not mutually exclusive. You can take a unit of six and two units of two if you want it. Um, otherwise, you can take the unit of six and it will hit, you know, with the fury of the emperor himself. Mm -hmm. Or you can take three units of two, split your force up over the battlefield and teleport around a little bit more. Both are quite good. I, I couldn't point to one as substantially better than the other. I've been very impressed by Alaris Terminators. Absolutely. They hit so hard. All right. We've got Ymir Hades with a five Canadian dollar super chat. Hey guys, been loving the 10th edition update videos. Do you think there's enough anti psyker in the game to keep caissons at bay? Um, no. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Um, they tend to not like a lot of invults, mm -hmm. and they tend to not like a lot of feel no pains generally. Whether or not you have um, one of those four up against mm -hmm. uh, psychic weapons, or whether it's just a feel no pain in general. Uh, and they also don't like getting shot first. So no. if you can try to do that, any of those will help you out. Uh, I'm interested to see where Thousand Suns fall when um, when, when the meta start? meta shakes itself out. Yeah, I there is no army in the game that is unbeatable. Um, Thousand Suns definitely have a lot of weaknesses. Um, if you have access to easy anti psyker like if you're playing Necrons and you want to add one of the Forge World uh, thingamajiggers, the or the Tomb, tomb tombs, Sentinel, yeah, or, or one tomb of the spiders, or the one of the Feel No Pain really does slow the train of the Thousand Suns. Or if you're playing Space Marines and you want to add a Librarian, or you're playing Eldar and you want to add some Warlocks, all of those things really do actually help quite a bit against Thousand Suns. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. As a T Suns player, I don't want to see that across the board for me no. at all. Um, Dark Like Vader with an $8 super chat. I'm new and a Death Guard player. Please help me. You guys rock, by the way. We love you. We love you. Thank you for your support. What do you think about Death Guard? Okay, so basically you have two ways of going about this. One, you can decide I want to play full Death Guard, or you can decide I want to play Death Guard with allies. I think Death Guard with allies is stronger because it gives you access to Chaos Knight, Brigands, and Nurglings, both of which fix relative weaknesses of your faction. You get effective long-range shooting from Chaos Knight, Brigands. And you get um, good mission play pieces that are relatively cheap and can deep strike with Nurglings. Um, so take that and then take a core of Death Guard. If you want to play death, just Death Guard, take Mortarian and three Plague Risk Crawlers and then support it with Cultists and Death Shroud Terminators with Lords of Virulence. That's kind of where your army core should be. Yeah, Death Shroud Terminators with Lords of Virulence are a really cool mechanic yes. where they, they can deep strike in and then they shoot you with Anti-Infantry 4+, plus mm -hmm. and reroll wounds. Yep. And then when you try to move, or if something moves up to them, they'll Overwatch. shoot you again with Overwatch. And it is actually quite nasty shooting up it, close. Especially if you put the strat for the AP or the extra 2 AP, if you can pull off the yeah. um, infected objective. Yeah, that is probably where I would try to go with Death Guard. Agreed. Uh, swarms of Plague Marines is probably not, not, not where it's at. Yeah. All right, we've got Pandemic Painting, a member for one month. Thank you Woo! so much. It says, woo, one month. I'm thinking of taking two brigands and chaos demons to make up for some of the shooting with a bunch of greater demons. Thoughts? Sounds think, awesome. Yeah, that sounds dope. Sounds great. Do it. Love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, two brigands. Brigands are amazing. They just hit on twos, and I think they get plus one AP against the closest target. Yeah, they do. So if you are a chaos army and you are in need of some shooting, think about taking some brigands in there. They brigands are, are also solid. not very strat dependent. So you can run them even if you don't have access to any of the chaos knight stratagems. Yes, that's very important. Mm -hmm. All right. Reviorus, Revirus, Reviorus, I am sorry. Welcome to the War Room, Silver. Thank you so much. We're glad to have you here. All right, we've got one last super chat. Hunter Cardwell says, $5 super chat. What are y'all's thoughts on the are units that have shot still eligible to shoot debate? Rules is written seems to read yes, yet lots of folks feel it's not rules as intended. So this really comes down to for Tau Empire. The question is if a unit has shot, can it then guide for another unit? Um, I think we're really going to have to see what GW wants on this. This is the kind of question you're going to have to ask your TO. I personally am playing it that a unit once it is shot cannot guide for another unit. Um, but I totally see the... Like, rules is written. You can do that. You can. But I don't think that's how it's supposed to be played. And I think we're going to get an FAQ pretty soon. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I think it it reads super obviously that you can't... That you can shoot with the unit that's guiding. I could see no, GW. No, no, The question is, okay... So a unit has, like, shot, right? Right. Can it? Can that unit then guide? It's well, still the, eligible to shoot. The unit guides and then can shoot. No, no, no. Okay, so unit, okay, unit A guides on a target. Yes. Then unit B shoots it. Right. Then unit C is shooting a target and unit B guides for it. I see. Yeah. I don't know how that works. Mm -hmm. What I do know is what works is unit A guides against a target. Yes. 
and then unit B is guy did yes. shoots it, but then unit A can also still shoot. Correct. Yes. So, uh, but can they also be guided by something else? I, I don't know. I will, wait, wait, ask your TO, ask your gaming buddies, or just wait for the FAQ. Yeah, it is not particularly clear. It looks rules is written like you can guide and then shoot. Whether you can shoot and then guide is a whole other thing. I think so. Rules is written. It's clear that you can do that. The question just rules was intended. I don't think that's the case. Yeah. It's a very like, do you, are you uh, raw or rye? Yeah. Um, so we've got a uh, 100 Swedish Krona super chat from somebody whose name I, I, I that spells out Frederick. Thank you so <laughs> much. You were way ahead of me. Uh, you knew there was no shot. I was reading that. Yeah. <laughs> After the Possessed Bomb and Termi Bomb plus some Cultists, where I fill my Black Legion list out, I had Cypher, Chain Cannon, Havix, and Lashavox. Works fine. Worked fine, but yeah. any other ideas? I like Obliterators. Obliterators are awesome. Um, the Forge Friend with two ectopla- three Ectoplasma Cannons is amazing. That's right. Yeah, the Forge Fiend. Um, anything that's shooting probably wants to be Chaos Undivided. Yes. Because you can then 1 CP reroll hits and wounds. And that's very, very strong. Uh, you can also be Mark of Nurgle on your shooting units and have one CP. You can't shoot me unless you're within 12. So you get to shoot. They don't get to shoot you back. The average strong. Terminator bomb is really cool because you get all five of the marks. That's right. That's right. Oh, that's Laz Havocs. Okay, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Try some obliterators. Yes. Uh, take them unmarked or Mark of Chaos Undivided. Teleport them onto the battlefield. One CP reroll hits and wounds. Dark packed for sustained or lethal hits. Mm-hmm. And then once again, they shoot indirect when yes. they packed. So they're going to be very, very strong on that turn. Then they walk out once CP real hits and wounds and shoot. Mm-hmm. They shoot very, very hard. Uh, and then final shout out to Tyrannosaurus Rex, who says, shout out Jack Harpster for being the coolest member of the Art of War team. I think you're only saying that because I like dinosaurs and uh, I like Tyrannosaurus Rexes. And you are a sucker for those, as you should be. And also, you know, the Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, Hawaiian shirts. All right. But uh, I think... You're pretty cool too, Quentin. And uh, I think that is it for us for today. So uh, check back in tomorrow where I believe we are doing a tier list of the different custodians. I believe we are. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Good to see you.